Hi everyone, this is Nick, and today I'm gonna to show you a fun way to draw your audience's attention to specific places on a map. So in my world, I work for zoos, aquariums, museums. We do a lot of visitor studies, research and evaluation on how visitors experience the zoo, how our guests uh, learn from their experiences that they have at our kinds of organizations. And one of the cool things that we often do is sort of this timing, uh, we do timing and tracking, or we do visitor observations. And one way that I thought we could sort of highlight some high engagement areas versus low engagement areas is creating a slide that has a full map of your organization. In this case, this is the map of Denver Zoo. That's where I work. Um, and we might say, we might have some data that says the, uh, we have the most popular exhibits and the least popular exhibits, or where we have the highest engagement or the lowest engagement in terms of visitor interaction. And so you could really use this technique on anything that you need to use in terms of highlighting specific specific areas on a map that you want to draw your audience's attention to uh, in a little bit uh, in a way that's a little bit more engaging than just sort of saying hey here's the most popular exhibits here's a list of the least popular exhibits uh, let's go ahead and show it visually on a map uh, just like this so in this case these are our high engagement areas and this is just um, uh, fake data for the purpose of uh, presentation here but let's just say these are our highest engagement areas. I could click over and then show the lowest engagement areas. And we have this sort of pulsing effect where we have these location pins on the map. And then these other circles are sort of just pulsing. And uh, that kind of repeats to sort of just show where the uh, high engagement and low engagement areas are. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of this slide and I'm going to show you how I made it. So the first thing here, we have our map. This is our full color map that I downloaded from the internet. Anyone can do it. It's public. Uh, and what I want to do is I wanted to recolor this photo so that it becomes de-emphasized. I don't want uh, all the color of the map because I really want the circles, the location pins that I'm going to add to the map to really pop and have a lot of contrast. So we're going to go ahead, click on the photo, go up to the picture format tab, and then click on this color drop down menu. You have a lot of different options here to recolor your photos. I'm going to go ahead with this light gray background color to light. Perfect. So that's really nice. Now what we want to do is we want to add the we want to start uh, with one of the circles that we have for our pulsing animation. So I'm going to insert a circle, just like we normally would. I'm going to resize it to be exactly how the size that I want. Let's go ahead and recolor it there, and I'm going to say I'm going to set this to no line so that there's no outline on this one. I'm going to push Control D to duplicate the circle. I want to select uh, select no fill. And then I want this one to be outlined. So I'm going to say it has a solid line, and it's going to be a little bit darker than the actual circle. Now this outline circle is the one that we're going to add our animation to. So let's go up to the Animation tab, and we're going to click down here to the Effect Animations. The Grow and Shrink is the one that you want. So go ahead and click that. It'll give you a quick preview. This is going to grow the shape. I'm going to click on the animation here, and then go over to Advanced Animation right there, and then click on the Animation Pane. The Animation Pane shows you all the different animations that you have set in your PowerPoint slide. Let's go ahead and right-click this and click on Effect Options. There's a few things that I want to edit here. Let's go to time. This actually is um, how much it's going to grow. So 150%, I think that's fine. Uh, you could change it if you wanted to. I'm going to go to the Timing tab, and I'm going to make it a little faster, set, set it to one second. And then I'm going to repeat until the end of the slide. OK, perfect. So we're going to do that. I'm going to click OK. And then up here, one more thing, under the timing menu, we right now it's set to start on a, on a mouse click. We want it to go automatically. So we want it to go with previous. I'm going to click on this. You can say with previous or after previous. We want it to be with previous. So I'm going to say with previous there. Awesome. Now we need to add one more animation to this um, because in order to have that pulsing effect, we also need the circle to fade out at the end. So what I'm going to do is highlight the animation. When you want to add an extra animation to an existing animation, you can't just click on any of these animations. You have to go to the Add Animation drop-down button. And then this gives you all the different things that you could add to the existing animation. So I'm going to go down here to Fade. This is the Exit Fade. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up to the timing and click with previous again. And then we want to right click, go to effect options, and then timing. I'm going to do the exact same thing. So one second, and then it's going to repeat until the end of the slide. We'll click OK. And now let's play this in slideshow mode and look at that outline circle. 
perfect. It's a really nice sort of fading, pulsing circle. Let's escape. Now I want them to be overlapped. So what I'm gonna do is highlight both circles. We're gonna go ahead up to the Shape Format menu and then use our Align tools to align them into the center and then make sure it's aligned into the middle. So now it's on top of each other. Let's play this in slideshow mode again and you'll see how that pulsing circle works. Awesome, this is perfect. Now, the only thing that we have to do is for as many locations on the map that we wanna highlight, all we have to do is group, um, make sure that we're highlighting both of the circles and then just duplicate them. We can push um, uh, control C and control V or control D to duplicate the, the group here. We don't wanna group these together because uh, formally, because we could highlight both of them, right click and then click on group. If we do that, that gets, rid of, that gets rid of the animations. So make sure that they're not grouped together formally. What I like to do is just drag like this so that they're both highlighted. Now I'm gonna push control D and that highlights the entire group. We'll do it again, control D. You can go ahead and position these. Now, anytime you wanna position uh, the full circle, you have to make sure to highlight that both, you have to make sure both of those circles are selected before you move it. So we'll do that. I'm gonna highlight this. And then let's just say, we're gonna move these. These are our high engagement areas. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and add the low uh, engagement areas. All we have to do for that is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate one of these again. And now what we have to do is just recolor these. So I'm going to go ahead and click Shape Format. Let's go ahead and this is my outlined circle. So I'm going to go ahead and make this orange. Oops, doesn't. oh, that's a bright fill. Sorry. We're going to say no fill. Oops. Actually, let me just delete this and let's start over. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. We'll duplicate it. And for this one, let's just pull out the circles so that we can do this one by one. So the shape fill, I'm gonna make orange. The outline circle, we're gonna go up to the outline and then outline it this way. Let's go ahead and put them right over the center. And now I can highlight both and we can duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate that. These are gonna be representing sort of our low engagement areas. Control D, and we'll go up there. Perfect, let's put, play this in slideshow mode. Because we had already set the animations from that very initial uh, two circles that we made, if we copy those, the animations will also copy, including uh, the with previous instead of on mouse click. So let's see if it works. If I play this in slideshow mode, everything should be pulsing and it looks great. A really cool pulsing effect. Now, if you just want to add the legend, all you need to do then is make a couple little circles here. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that. And then we'll just insert a text box. Let's just say these are the most popular. I'm gonna put that there duplicate that text box and say least popular. All right, if we wanted to color the text to match, we could do that too. And we'll just recolor that text there, orange, maybe make it a little bit darker for some contrast there. And let's play it in slideshow mode. You have a really, really cool slide. Now, the example that I showed in the beginning, we sort of clicked through. We said, first, we're going to have the most popular. And then I'm going to click to the next slide and show you the least popular overlaid on top of that. So let's escape out of this, and I'll show you what I did. All I did was duplicate this slide, Control D, to duplicate the final slide. And on the first slide then, we know that we didn't wanna show our least popular, so let's go ahead and delete all of the orange. Let's see if we can do this. Oops, I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't wanna highlight the photo, but I wanna highlight all the orange circles. Perfect. And we're gonna highlight the orange, delete that. And now we can play it in slideshow mode. This is our most popular. I'm gonna click to the next slide 
and now we've overlaid our least popular. I hope you like this video, and I bet you can find some different ways that you can use this technique in sort of highlighting for your audience where uh, there are the best and worst or highest and lowest, any, any kind of contrast that you can think of in terms of wanting to highlight locations on a map. And I have to say that I learned this technique from a YouTube channel, um, a PowerPoint YouTube channel called OneSkill. He is awesome. I'm going to put his link below. I hope you'll go and subscribe to his channel, but I learned uh, how to make this sort of pulsing animation effect there. Uh, it's very awesome. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel too. Every time I post a new video in data design, PowerPoint, Excel, or Word, you'll get notified uh, every time that video pops up. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you next time.